What's going on guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to The Drop, which is a weekly series every Monday right here on the YouTube channel where I go through what games are coming out for that particular Tuesday, so if you guys want to pick up a new game, you are well informed and able to do so. And this week, uh, there are a lot of big releases, including one of the biggest releases of the holiday season from Ubisoft that's expected to make a lot of money and might be a redemption of an entire franchise that was ruined. I'm talking about Assassin's Creed. Anyways, there's a lot of awesome games coming out this week, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, we have a game that I thought would get overshadowed by the rest of the games coming out this week, so I thought I would give it a spot here on the drop just in case anyone wanted to pick it up and was a fan of RPGs. Uh, so this is an RPG by the name of Tales of Zestiria coming out on the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC, uh, developed by Namco Bandai, which in my opinion is a pretty good company to buy a game from and a pretty trustworthy one at that. Uh, so in this game, two nations fight over supremacy, and Sori is the main character who is a shepherd destined to save everyone, and with the help of his friends, he gets it's closer to finding out what darkness is within the land and coming out uh, and that is overtaking the people and has to defeat it with, like I said, the help of his friends. It's pretty classic RPG storytelling kind of plot going on, uh, but where this game really shines is through the gameplay. It's open world, so it transitions seamlessly in between the uh, fighting scenes and just exploring the land. And also there's this interesting fusion gameplay kind of element where two characters can actually morph together to double their power and more effectively take on enemies. Ultimately. Uh, I found it interestingly enough, uh, or interesting enough to mention here on the drop. So if you're interested in a new RPG, this one again is coming out on the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC this week. Next up, we've got Guitar Hero Live, which is actually the first Guitar Hero game to come out in five years. It's been half a decade since we saw Guitar Hero, and the last one was actually Warriors of Rock, which was kind of a flop, but it was narrated by Gene Simmons, so I guess it kind of balances it out, because Gene Simmons is pretty cool. He's the guy from Kiss with long tongue. Uh, but anyways, Guitar Hero Live is taking an entirely different stance on the way music games are normally done, I suppose. Uh, if you know the Guitar Hero controller, actually, hold on, I'll go get one. So if you know the Guitar Hero controller, like I was saying, you've got these five buttons here, each with different colors, so then you can play the game accordingly and, you know, nail these notes and chords as they come up on the screen. Now, the way Guitar Hero Live did it is that they actually only have three uh, rows of buttons, and each of these rows has two different columns of buttons, I suppose is the best way to put it. So you would have one, two, three, and then four, five, six, which is way different than the way this controller works and it's definitely going to throw off a lot of the old Guitar Hero fans but it could implement some interesting changes in the gameplay uh, but where this game is really changed like on an entirely different scale is that they actually sent a ton of people to different venues and recorded their reactions as the music changed in quality for instance uh, the audience will actually react to yourself to the way you play if you start screwing up or alternately if you're screwing up and then you start doing better now, there are pretty much three stages of reactions for these crowds. You've got the impressed crowd, which of course are like, yeah, you know, keep playing, you're doing awesome. You've got the unimpressed crowd, which is just kind of like, you know, I can't believe I paid for this ticket, but I guess they're okay, we'll stick it out. And then you've got the crowd that's completely unimpressed by the way you're playing and actually wants their money back and start throwing stuff at you on stage, which is actually pretty cool whenever you're in the middle of playing a game and see the audience react to actually how you're playing as opposed to just some virtual characters. Uh, of course, your bandmates kind of do the same thing. If you start screwing up on chords or you play a wrong note in the solo or something, uh, maybe your bassist will look over at you and be like, dude, what are you doing? You're screwing up, man. And then your drummer will start looking at you and he'll be doing like a whole bunch of weird facial emotions. And it's a really interesting kind of gameplay. And what I like about it is that it actually sets Guitar Hero Live apart from Rock Band 4, unlike the rest of the games in the franchise that were pretty much the direct, you know, they're the same thing. Rock Band and Guitar Hero back in the day were pretty much identical except for the track list and the way it was um, gone about the uh, look of the game. But it looks like Guitar Hero Live is actually pretty different from Rock Band, and that's a good thing. Of course, there are also a couple of other changes that set this game and this franchise apart from the others, one of which is Guitar Hero TV, which is pretty much where if you have friends over, you or someone else can actually play the guitarist in a music video, and then while other people are sitting on the couch waiting for their turn or however you want to do it, they can watch the music video, you can play the game, and everyone's entertained because they're able to watch a music video and you're able to play the game. So that's definitely different from how it was in the past whenever one person would be playing completely immersed in what was going on, on the screen and everyone else was just kind of glancing up you know yeah man you're doing great and then over here checking Twitter or drinking something or whatever and uh, it's nice to see that they're kind of incorporating different kinds of gameplay for the party crowd because this is where those games really shine and the older games really didn't have that kind of option as far as tracks go there are going to be hundreds of songs available on day one and as Rock Band 4 is doing more and more are going to be added as time goes on in the form of DLC or hope 
hopefully some of these tracks would be free. That's kind of how I would like to see it. Uh, but of course, DLC is completely expected for this kind of thing. And uh, pricing for this is kind of weird. So it's coming out on the Wii U, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, which I was kind of surprised to see it coming out on the Wii U for some reason. It didn't seem like that kind of game. Uh, but if you want to buy this game, you're going to have to buy the game and a controller because the controllers, unlike Rock Band 4, are not compatible. You know, the older controllers aren't compatible with the new generation consoles. So if you want the game and a controller, you're going to have to pay $99.99, which of course is kind of steep, but I suppose it's okay for what you're getting. And if you want the game and two controllers, you're going to have to pay $149.99, which I suppose is understandable for the amount of hardware that you're getting with your purchase. Next up, the last episode of Tales from the Borderlands Episode 1, Episode 5, The Vault of the Traveler is going live this week from Telltale Games, which of course are the masters of storytelling, as I've said in the past, uh, in the gaming industry. So very little is actually known about what is in this episode, because Telltale does want to keep this kind of a secret, they don't want to leak out the ending of the entire series before the uh, actual episode goes live. So uh, pretty much in Season 1, it follows the story of Rise and Fiona, Rise wants to be famous and Fiona wants to have riches and they're all going after this vault key which of course is an access to a vault which would get you fame and riches so they've kind of teamed up and there's a lot of conspiracy there's a lot of deaths with characters that you actually get connected to and telltale has ultimately done a pretty good job with it and um if you haven't played this franchise and you want to get in on it, the first episode is actually free on consoles and mobile devices, so if you haven't checked it out, there's your opportunity to do so. Literally, Telltale has left you no excuse to not try out this franchise, so I'm going to go ahead and try it. Last but not least, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is coming out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, and this game takes place in London in the year 1868, which uh, what's going on is that working class slaves are actually bringing forth the Industrial Revolution very quickly, and more and more inventions are happening and it's a very turbulent time for Great Britain and uh, Jacob Fry is a gangster assassin and he sees the kind of tyranny that's going on over these working class slaves and wants to put a stop to it so he kind of forms this uh, gang I suppose to take on the Great Britain forces that are you know suppressing the voices of the people and it's a pretty Assassin's Creed sounding game but what's really interesting is that Jacob has a sister named Evie and Evie is going to bring forth the stealth um, elements of an Assassin's Creed game that we would normally see from like a Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2, and then Jacob is going to be the explosives, you know, really action-packed gameplay that we've come to expect from games like Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Assassin's Creed 3, which is a pretty good way to make sure that all fans of the franchise are adequately, you know, supportive of what's going on in the game and are happy with the gameplay throughout, at least at some point. Since last year's Unity disaster where Assassin's Creed Unity launched with tons of glitches, the gameplay was okay, and the story was kind of lackluster, they've made a lot of changes to make sure that Syndicate is a good addition to the Assassin's Creed franchise and it might actually bring about some redemption for the uh, name Assassin's Creed. The gameplay I've seen looks really good, there's a lot of new weapons, the gameplay looks a lot more fluid than it did in the past, and I think it's going to bring forth a lot to make sure that the franchise keeps going forward in a positive way as opposed to the way Unity was making me think about about Assassin's Creed, which was just in a very depressed and disappointed way. So hopefully Assassin's Creed Syndicate will be good, and it's actually coming out this Friday, October the 23rd on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So there you guys have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like down below and comment what games you're going to be picking up this week. Are you a huge fan of Assassin's Creed and can't wait to see where Syndicate takes the series? Are you looking forward to the final episode of Tales from the Borderlands? Are you really looking forward to that uh, RPG from Namco Bandai? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And if you are new to the channel or you've never seen any of my other content, I make new videos like three or four days a week depending on the week. So there's always something new on the channel when you drop by to watch some videos. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. Video. Hope you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.